Welcome to Birmingham General Cemetery, a Grade 2 star listed cemetery located in Birmingham's historic jewellery quarter. Known now as Key Hill, it was opened in 1836 by a group of non-conformist businessmen, that is those who are not members of the Anglican faith. It was Birmingham's first non-denominational cemetery, the object being to provide a burial ground which would be open to those of all religions and faiths or none. Key Hill holds a range of intriguing catacombs and a wealth of funerary monuments, on which are recorded many of Birmingham's famous and influential residents, with stories as diverse as that of Shakespearean actors, Victorian poets, industrialists, politicians, radical preachers, the first female journalist and the inventor of egg-free custard. Many of these residents were essential in the establishment of George Dawson's civic gospel, the ethos of which was an ambitiously inclusive culture where everything should be for everybody. This movement helped the people of Birmingham create a reputation as a trailblazing modern city. In partnership with the Everything to Everybody project, we would like to tell you more about these Victorian do-gooders. The grave of Charles Rees Pemberton is located here, in section O of Keyhill Cemetery. As you can see, the headstone has been lost, but burial records allow us to know the position where he was laid to rest. Charles Rees Pemberton was an actor and public lecturer. He was born in 1790 in Pontypool, Wales, and was registered as Thomas Rees Pemberton. His family moved to Birmingham in 1794, and he was sent to study at a Unitarian charity school. When he was old enough, he apprenticed to his uncle, a brass founder, but aged 17 he ran away from home to Liverpool and was press-ganged into the Navy. After seven years of service, Pemberton left the Navy and lived in the West Indies for a time, finding employment as an actor and as a theatre manager. At this time, Pemberton was described as a wanderer, constantly moving about. In 1827, back in England, Pemberton began acting in plays by Shakespeare, gaining praise for his portrayal as tragic characters but was criticised for his portrayal of comedic characters. After performing at the Royal Theatre in Birmingham, Pemberton chose to concentrate on reciting and lecturing about Shakespeare, particularly enjoying talking about Shakespeare's tragedies. Pemberton wrote about his experience for the Monthly Repository, a Unitarian periodical that, at the time of Pemberton's contributions, was edited by William Johnson Fox. He also wrote plays, songs and poems that were published in the magazine. On 3rd March 1840, after a period of ill health, Charles Pemberton died at the age of 50. Reports from the time of his death state that the following epitaph, written by Fox, was inscribed on his gravestone. His gentle and fervid nature, his acute susceptibility, and his aspirations to the beautiful and true were developed and exercised through a life of vicissitude, and often of privation and disappointment. As a public lecturer, he has left a lasting memorial in the minds of the many whom he guided to a perception of the genius of Shakespeare in its diversified and harmonising powers. At oppression and hypocrisy he spurned with a force proportioned to that wherewith he clung to justice and freedom, kindness and sincerity, ever prompt to generous toil. He won for himself from the world only the poet's dowry, the hate of hate, the scorn of scorn, the love of love. I hope you have enjoyed this brief insight into the people buried here in Key Hill Cemetery. If you'd like to learn more about the people buried within Key Hill or Warstone Lane cemeteries, or if you want to find out more about the Everything to Everybody project, you can go to links in this video's description. If you'd like to help us to continue with our work, you can donate to the Jewellery Quarter Research Trust's GoFundMe page. The link is in the description, and all the proceeds will go towards the production of more virtual tours.